read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners it is the second half of Alexa Riley's week we've got Yay. untouched for you in just a little bit but until then we're going to talk about dirty books. Let's get to it. Thanks for being right. here. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about some of the books that I read over the break that I loved. <laughs> Since last week, I kind of left off with the first one was it wasn't really a disappointment. It was an unexpected read. And I, when it comes to if they do that book, Mexican Gothic, if they do it on like HBO or some shit, I am 100% going to watch it because it was really good. Like, it's going to make a great visually cool show. Yeah. Hold on. <clears throat> so I finished Courting Trouble by Kerrigan Byrne. And I think I even like was texting you about it as I was reading it. Yeah. It is. I wonder what book. Hold on. I'm going to I'm gonna look real quick and see. I think this is book two in the Good Girls series, maybe. Yes, it's the Good Girls series. It's book two, um, Courting Trouble by Kerrigan Byrne. And the third book, I just got the arc for it. She sent it to me. And I'm like, I got friends in <laughs> places. Anyways, so I'm excited to read that one. But this book, I loved it. It was so, like, I, I think I even talked about it before the break because I started it and it goes back and forth with Tom because yeah. – the girl is, she's like 18 or, you know, something like that, I think. And she gets tuberculosis. And so everybody in her house has to leave because they don't want to catch it. But like the farmhand, he's like a couple years younger than her. He's had it already. And so he has to basically stay there with the doctor and help take care of her. And he has to like bathe her and like all this stuff. And he's like falling in love with her as he's like bringing her back to life. And it's kind of romantic and really sweet. And then they meet again later and she's married. And so I was just like, how the fuck is this going to work out? <laughs> so, but it turns out her husband was kind of a piece of shit. So, and he tried to kill her. <laughs> so, and this happens in the very beginning. So, uh, yes, I think, did that one go with another one? Was that one with the yeah. highwayman? It, it, no, I remember the sister. Yes. Okay. So it, um, it's, I think it's kind of like a spinoff from that series. Yeah. But yeah. It's, uh, so the first book in this, the good girls, uh, the first book in this series is, the captain from the highwayman. So, you know, in the highwayman, the heroine works for Scotland Yard and her boss like tries to kiss her. And he's like, well, we should just get married because we work together really well. You're a nice person. I'm nice. Like, let's just get married. And she's like, I'm already in love with somebody else. <laughs> you know? So it's the captain. So in the first book, Captain Morley, he falls in love with this girl's sister. So in courting trouble, in this one, it starts out like she has to marry this this asshole because he has rank and title and money and all this stuff. And her father basically sells her off because he catches her with the hero in this book. When they're young, she loses her virginity to him before she gets married. And so the dad finds them and he sends the boy away and he's like, I'll ruin him. If you go after him, I'll make his life miserable. He'll live in the gutters, you know? So she marries the guy because she feels like she has to like to protect him. So anyway, so it's years and years later and the, the boy has turned into a man. <laughs> now he's a doctor and she gets shot by her husband and she's brought in. And so her husband dies. That's in like the very first chapter. And, and it, it actually happens at the end of book one. So, you know, he's dead. So she gets brought in on a table and he has to like save her life again. Mm -hmm. And it's about the two of them falling in love together. And holy shit, it's so good because the whole time he's just like, he's pissed. He's so pissed that like she married this guy, like she agreed to do it. Like she never went after him. Like he, you know, he, she, you know, and she's like, well, I loved you all this time. And he's like, it, 
how could you do this if you loved me? Like, he's so angry. And then just the whole time they're together and he's fucking her, he's angry. And he's just like, like, he's just so mad that he has to fuck her because he wants her so badly. Like, this is what I love about Kerrigan Bird's book mm-hmm. because the sex is so ridiculous. Like, the heroes are just insane with need. They're so beyond thoughts and rage and everything. It's like they're mad at their bodies because they can't control their desire <laughs> to this moment, you know, God, it was, so, and it ended so well. And, and it's the next one's going to be even better. And then the one after that's going to be really good too, because there's like a scarred hero with a hood and he's like hanging out in the background the whole time. You're like, well, what's up with him? <laughs> <laughs> this guy over there, <laughs> you know, I've already, he's already caught my eye. So the next two books are going to be great. So I can't read, I can't wait to read the arc I got the other night. Um, so that the one that comes out, I think it comes out like in March, maybe I'll have to look. So, but yeah, if you haven't read Courting Trouble, the, go get it. It's like Kerrigan Burn, this series, man. God, it's so damn good. <laughs> I loved it. So that's one I'm reading right now that I absolutely loved. And there's another one that I'm currently listening to. That was uh, recommended to me by Carla. Um, she um, actually helps moderate our Facebook group, Read Me Romance Headquarters. And she runs a um, bookstagram. And I think her handle on there is Carla is Reading, I think. I'm going to look it up because I should definitely give her credit for this one. Hold on. Yeah, Carla is Reading. <laughs> That's what it says on here. And then, um, so she does like book reviews, book blogs, that kind of thing. But um, anyway, so she recommended um, this book to me and she said, there's kind of a love story in it. It's so she was like, I'd consider it more of a YA. She was like, but I think you'd really like it. And she messaged me and told me this. And I was like, well, this, there must be something in this that made her think of like me or, yeah. or that I would like this story. And so it's called, with the fire on high and it's by Elizabeth Acevedo and she narrates the book too. The author narrates it and her voice is gorgeous. It's beautiful. She's got this amazing like Latin accent, Spanish. I'm not sure like what she's from. I think she's from Puerto Rico. If, if, if she is anything like the heroine in this book, the heroine's from uh, she's half Puerto Rican and half black. And so the thing I love about this book, and let me set it up for you. Um, that it starts out with a girl. She's got a daughter who I think is two or three. And um, she got pregnant when she was 14. She was a freshman in high school. Yes. With her boyfriend and she got pregnant, but she stayed in school and she is being raised by her grandmother. Her mother died giving birth and her father li- father lives in Puerto Rico and sometimes he visits and sometimes and most of the time he stays on the island. And so she's got a really kind of not a strange relation not a strained but um they're like they're just not really close. Like she cares about him but there's all these like emotional blocks because he took off. You mm-hmm. know she was born he went back to Puerto Rico. And she was left there to be raised by her grandmother. And so now her grandmother is helping her raise her daughter. And so she feels, you know, all these emotions, like all this guilt. And, you know, the the internal struggle with her about, like, she could only afford three new outfits for daycare. You know, and it's like, it, like listening to her struggles as a young mom, I... Let me tell you right now. Oh my God. There was this one part where she was talking about her father and she said, it's like, I th- I'm pretty sure it was like, she was comparing him to, she was like, it's like when you put on a t-shirt that's too small. And then when you take it off, it's stretched out. And mm-hmm. she was like, that's what it feels like with my father. She was like, I can still see the outline of him, but he's not there, but I feel it. And I know he was there and he's not anymore. And that absence makes me angry. And I was listening to this shit and I was like sobbing because it's just, it's so beautiful. It's written so beautiful. And when the author reads it to you, you know what she means, you know, mm-hmm. it's not like, 
Like there's not, and that was another thing about the Mexican Gothic book was the narrator, when she pronounced the the words in Mexican or like in Spanish, because the girl's Mexican in the book, when she would pronounce the words in Spanish, it was beautiful. And I almost wish she would have used that accent through the whole book because the girl's Spanish, you know, she's a Spanish. Mm -hmm. So um, I hate that she didn't, but she was very like, I am going to the store to get whatever and then it was like the word would be in spanish and it would just be really beautiful so it was almost like when she was speaking english it was very straight and stilted and mexican gothic and so that kind of like when monotone took me out a little bit but let me tell you like the narration on this one like like i want to say her her name again the author is elizabeth acevedo and it's with the fire on high and like she puts love into these sentences when she says them. And it's like, you can tell, like, if this story isn't about her, like, she's had these same struggles. Mm -hmm. so the girl in the book, she she wants to go to culinary school. And she's trying to figure out how to do that while raising a baby. And she's like, you know, how do I go to college? Like, how do I get this to happen? And then there's this boy at school who's interested in her. And she's like, I don't have time to fall in love. She's like, that's not a reality for me. I don't have that luxury. To yeah. be able to fall in love. And now, and I like, you know, I didn't have necessarily the, I, you know, getting pregnant too, you know, super young or anything. I was very lucky that you know, I was married and my husband was really supportive when we had our kids and we're still together. I haven't kicked him out yet. <laughs> but like, you know, listening to it though, like there's so many moments where she's hitting these notes. Like she said when, you know, the first time, you know, she had, uh, she found out she was pregnant, you know, and, and the emotion she felt behind it. And she's like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. If I wanted to keep it, you know, if I didn't want to keep it in my choices and what my options were. And it was just like that overwhelming sense of now my grandmother, here she was. Like when I told her, I saw the light in her eyes go away. Cause she thought she was finished raising kids. And now here she is having, she knows she's going to have to raise another baby. And it was just like, fuck, you know, like, I'm telling you, this book is like, it's so relatable on so many different levels, but there is this sweet underlying, like young love story that's happening too. you know, that, that she's still trying to figure out who she is while she falls in love. And yet she's had to grow up so fast because she has this beautiful baby. Oh my God. And like this, the, just the connection to her culture. And like I said, she's half black and half Puerto Rican. So you know, she always, I think she even says in there, she was like, every time I talk to somebody about, you know, what am I? It's a geography lesson, you know, where she's having to explain like, you know, not everybody that's black, you know, it doesn't speak Spanish or, or whatever, you know, it was like the, the whole thing she goes on about it. So it's really interesting from that aspect of it. I mean, I just, I cannot recommend this book enough. And Carla nailed it when she told me, she was like, I think you'd really like this. She absolutely nailed it. I love it. It's just, I mean, she listened to the audio too. And she's like, you'll really like the audio. And it is, I mean, especially with the author reading it, like you just feel it when she hits it. So I don't know. I can't recommend it enough. You got to go listen to it. If you're hearing me, go listen to it. It's, it's so good. And it's not that like, it's a big tearjerker. It's just, I'm emotionally invested in it. And I like a book like that. You know, I like a book that makes me feel that it's not just, I mean, cotton candy books are great. You know, they're sugary and they're fun and fluffy. But when you read a book and you're you're emotionally invested in it, God damn, there's just nothing better. Like yeah. that's what I love about books. You know, I love about reading and writing, and God, it's so good. So that's what I read over the break. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you read anything recently that you want to recommend or play? I went down a shifter path because uh, Fiona Davenport released a new one, so oh, I went yeah. back. And what, I was that mate, her, what was it? Mate something? Her fate. Her fate. Yeah, it was way off. <laughs> so I went back. And then she, Fiona Davenport is Rochelle Page. And she mm -hmm. has this bear series that I really like. So I went back and did that one. Oh, I love it. So I was rereading all those. And then I was like, oh, I want more bear books. And I pulled up Jessica Clare. <laughs> <laughs> or I, I guess, guess her, her shifter series is like Jill Sims Jill. or something like that. Is it Jill Jill Sims? Is that right? Something like that. Or Jill Miles. Yeah. So I went back and started reading her series. Mm -hmm. So I just What's that? Is desperately seeking shape shifter. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I saw somebody post it up in headquarters today that they read the, the entire new species one. Did you see it? Yes, I she see said, that. She was like, help. I've been on a binge for like the past three weeks. I've read every Lauren Donner new species book. I was like, I've never been so proud in all my life. <laughs> I mean, there's like, what is there, like 15 books in that series? Yeah. And they're long. They're not, I mean, not long, long, but I mean, they're a couple hundred pages. They're meaty. Yeah. Especially God, the yeah. first few. <sighs> laying the groundwork. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I could go back and just read them all over Me too. again. And like, I, like I didn't know what was going to mm -hmm. happen and just experience them. I think that would be the best thing about getting amnesia. Yes. <laughs> like, <you> come back. <laughs> that's what we need to do we need to write a book about a heroine with amnesia and she goes back and she re reads all her favorite books she's like oh, they're wonderful <laughs> you're like you wrote them <laughs> and her name's alexa riley <laughs> well i have a bunch of lady listener emails that i wanted to share if if it's okay with you um yeah. Okay, oh, great. They're my right, let's do it. Okay. Um, I posted up in our Facebook group, Read Me Romance Headquarters, and I'll tell everybody, I was like, it's a new year. Why don't you go ahead and tell me, like, what's your best slash worst uh, New Year's resolution? Because I thought, hey, this is our first episode of 2020. So let's kick it off. Uh, this is, says, New Year's resolutions. Our lovely hosts. I like how that starts out. Instead of picking a resolution to fuck up within the first weeks of the year, I pick a quote to live by. My favorite, oh, I pick a quote to live by my, my year by. My favorites have been, I know my truth, Vince Vaughn, and it is in couples retreat. And if you do not contribute to my happiness, you have no, I have no place for you in my life. Unknown Facebook post shared with me on my timeline. This method of resolution has been life altering. I have cut out toxic people, discovered my core values and become a better person. I'm still a work in progress, but I have discovered what makes me feel happy for 2021. I'm still searching. I think it will be Dolly Parton's. Don't get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Work has monopolized my time in 2020 and I'm not willing to sacrifice my marriage or career or career advancement. My husband and I have set a plan to book a weekend one tank oh book a weekend quote one tank trip every three months and open to suggestions if anyone has a quote to assist me in my journey thanks for reading and keeping me entertained Audria I like oh, that I guess I guess the one tank trip is anywhere you can go on a tank of gas yeah I mean, that would be gas. really fun I like that but um that's such a good idea to have instead of a resolution to pick a quote to live your yeah. year by I really like that. Somebody said something about, oh, I, I was talking about Dolly Parton the other day and LB told me one of her quotes was, it takes a lot of money to look this cheap. <laughs> I was like, I could live by that one. <laughs> That's amazing. Alexa Riley could, could launch a career off that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it takes a lot of money to run this like method of horse shit over here. <laughs> it's all right. All right, this is entitled New Year's Resolutions. Again, hey, Lady DJs, uh, I'm 2019. I guess this is supposed to be in <laughs> instead of I'm. In 2019, I made a resolution to learn to swim at 25 years old. I never learned as a kid and, always embar and I was always embarrassed that I didn't know how to swim as an adult. I took two courses of adult swim lessons at the city pool. I was the youngest person in my lessons by at least a decade, and we had half the pool for lessons while the other half was used for water aerobics whose instructor played the worst remixes of top 40 songs I'd ever heard. Even with the awful music, I really enjoyed learning to swim and I'm proud to say that I can freestyle do an elementary backstroke and poorly breaststroke. I love the podcast and listen to you while in quarantine helps keep me, keep me help helps keep me stay sane. Best, Sabrina. You can say my name. Well, I just did Sabrina and congratulations. <laughs> that's awesome. That that's as an adult, awesome. you went back and learned to swim. I think that's fantastic. Like, what a great resolution that it's like, you know what? I didn't ever learn how to do that. I always said I wanted to learn how to do a pull up before I'm 40. Yeah. I've got like five months left. My daughter has <laughs> my daughter has one of those pull up thingies in her doorway. Can you do one? No, I tried to do one. She can barely do one. And she's like tiny. I know. That, I, I, tried, just, I could barely like move it off. She's like, you're pathetic. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> you know, can you watch my boobs weigh? <laughs> <laughs> heavy. 
I just gave up on that dream. Like it was like, uh, I remember telling, I'm like, I'm going to learn how to do a pull up before I'm 40. And I'm like, eh, I'm going to eat a piece of cake before I'm 40. <laughs> Let's do something more attainable. <laughs> uh, this one's entitled best resolution ever. It involves wine. Okay. Hey, lady DJs. Okay. So I'm sure there's other great resolutions out there, but this one was great. Did you know that Washington state has the second highest production of premium wine in the United States? just behind California. Well, now you know. A town called Woodenville, just outside Seattle, has the highest concentration of wine tasting rooms in the state, over 120 of them. Side note, I work for one of them. I just want to say real quick, I want to pause and say, I love a well-constructed email. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. She's giving us backstory. She's setting the stage. This is perfect. Back to resolutions. A friend and I made a resolution in 2016 that we were going to we were going to go wine tasting at every tasting room in Woodenville. Thankfully, because I work at the wine in the wine industry, I get to taste anywhere for free. It took us two years to get through every tasting room, but by God, we did it. And since we finished, there's been 10 new tasting rooms open. We need to get back to work. Here's to all of Read Me Romance, Landia, having a good 2021 and support your local wineries. Your listener, Monica. Nice. That's I like awesome. To have resolutions that are fun. Like I know. To get out there and do stuff. That's such a great idea because not only do you get to go to wineries, but you get to spend time with your best friend. Like, come on, that's fucking cool. Like, that's a resolution that doesn't punish you. You don't have to give up anything. You're making a point to not only I mean, you could say something broad like, oh, I want to spend more time with my family and friends. But this is like a directive. Where it's like, yeah. you know what? We said we're going to do it. Let's go do this this weekend. You know, that's cool. Hopefully soon we can do that again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this one was in my email box over the break, but I wanted to print it and read it. <laughs> it says, Dairy Girls. Hi, I was catching up on the podcast this afternoon. Episode 109 where you mentioned Dairy Girls. I love them too. Have you seen them on the Great, Ritty, Great British Bake Off Christmas special? Hilarious train wreck watching Paul Hollywood say dig deeper to say something nice about those cakes. I laughed so, so hard. Happy New Year to all, Teresa, North Carolina. I just want to say I didn't, I know I talked about Dairy Girls last season. The reason I watched Dairy Girls is because of the Great British Baking Show, because I saw them all trying to cook and they were all ridiculous and they were all terrible at it, but also really good too. And they were so funny and charming that I watched Dairy Girls, the show because of that and it was so fucking good i love that show so much and i think it's nicola is her real name um i forget the the name of the the character she plays on dairy girls but she's in bridgerton so but she's one of the irish girls that's on there and um it, it's it's so uh, dairy girls is amazing if you haven't watched it go watch it have you watched it yet mel no Add it to the list, okay? It's a good one. And those are short. I think there's only like, there's two seasons, but there's only like eight episodes in each season or something. And they're all like 20 minute episodes. Okay. So like those are really fast, but you definitely need to watch that because that's the one I was telling you that's based in Ireland with the group of friends. Yeah. Really good. All right. This one says, I blame you. I just want you to know you are awesome. I love listening. You make my 45 minute drive to work a lot more interesting. I'm a manager, so I have to be careful about what I share. Most of my friends are a little uptight. Before you girls, I shared my fantastic. I shared with my fantastic husband. One day, I was home alone baking. Hubby took the kids with him shopping. I did not hear him come home because I was listening to you. I'm elbow deep in cookie dough and was at a really good part. And oh, and look, but don't touch. <laughs> oh shit. Here is where I blame you. I discovered daddy books because of you. I shared this with my husband of almost 20 years. He made an honest effort, but he is the worst when it comes to daddy talk. Yeah. When something like this, oh God, she hasn't broken out. Him, come to daddy. Have you been a good girl? Me. Depends on what happens if I'm a bad girl. Him, I don't know. Just get in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I love that that is so relatable oh my god every time it de devolves into a joke or me turning into the quote-unquote mommy as he calls it now he has a kink i do the daddy talk <laughs> oh <my laughs> she said but we had a massive breakthrough he is the fifth 
He is a, a filthy alpha, and I had no idea. Oh, my God, I had to share this as my thank you, him. I'm going to get you pregnant tonight. Me, haha, I have an IUD. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> him, I'm going to fuck the IUD out of you, even if it takes me all night. Me. <laughs> After that, his alpha game is off the charts. I could fill a book with those crazy possible stuff, he says. We still flip, and I am the domineering mommy. Never thought I would go there. So thank you. I love the podcast. I love listening to you chat. Please keep sharing a wife and love. That's awesome. I love that. That's awesome. I love the dirty talk. He's like, I don't know. Just get the better. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. That just sometimes even just being silly yeah. is fun. You know, like that feels good to share that. Even if it's, you know, not for something serious and, and, you know, you can try new kinks and try new stuff, but God, if you can't laugh sometimes during sex, what's the point? Yeah. Like that's, that's the best too. All right. This one's entitled, I don't do resolutions, but hey, lady DJs. So your question was about resolutions. I have not made one in many decades, although I did go through a very obnoxious phase in my 30s where I'd tell people, this is the year I'm not smoking and wait for all the well wishes to die down and then confess that I had never smoked. <laughs> but that I did, I did not certainly, <laughs> that I'd not certainly be, be starting. I'd like to take the good habits we learned as a family in 2020 and continued in this year. The three of us have been home pretty much nonstop in our small house, and we've got an awesome groove going. Hubs is 56. I'm 52. Daughter is almost 18. Our secret is we leave each other the fuck alone. <laughs> That's like my house. <laughs> I wish it was in my house. And meet up for meal times or movies or gaming most days. Might I recommend a fast but really fun game, Catch the Moon? She included a link. I've never heard of it. And might I recommend most more sweetness, literally like more candy because good candy can reset my brain from some pretty awful shit and keeps me from starting shit. Prob I probably can't finish. LOL. I love this email. <laughs> this summer I started buying candy from Swedish candy company in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. They are a Swedish, Finnish, Danish and Norwegian candies, chocolate teas and treats. Daughter likes Ram Rambo, R-A-M-B-O, twists. I love the smoked licorice fish. Oh, God. Mm. And Hubs loves the salted skulls. So fucking good and gorgeous to look at it. Trust me. She included the link. I'm going to send this to you because you'll probably love this show. Mm -hmm. Happy 2021 to read me romance. And here's to a year of pre precedented times and times that make us weep with joy instead of just weep. Best well, Teresa. <sighs> I love that. That was great. It's called leave each other the fuck alone. <laughs> My daughter sometimes doesn't come out of her room like all day. What's that like? I don't know. Can you imagine if you got to stay in your room all day? Okay. I can't even imagine. What if someone let me stay in a room all fucking day? I don't know. She's getting all of her shit done. So that's all that matters. Yeah. All right. This one's entitled New Year's Resolutions. Hey, ladies, happy new year. My new year's resolution is to do a forward fold in yoga. I haven't been able to do this since I was like 10. I have never done a real new year's resolution. So I thought I'd start with something simple. In early, that doesn't sound simple. It does not. I don't know about yoga, but that doesn't sound simple. In earlier years, I've tried school schedule resolutions and they went to hell in a handbasket. I don't know. Maybe this year will be different. Thanks for reading, eh? that's that was wonderful that was amazing oh my god i love all of this i want to know what a forward fold is now i'm gonna have to google that oh my god all right well we've got god what are we doing this week oh yeah it's still us <laughs> we're doing, we're doing second half to go Yes. Untouched by Alex Sorelli. You're about to get the final installment. Thank you, everybody who uh, sent us emails, by the way. Those are my favorite. I love the emails. Please, if you have a story or anything you want to tell us, you can do um, New Year's resolutions, things that work for you, or just tell us how it's going, especially if it's funny. We love those. Yeah. Um, but send them to us at readmeromance at gmail.com, and um, maybe I'll get right on the air. So mm -hmm. until then, um, we're going to play Untouched the second half of it. And then afterwards we'll tell you um, what we've got coming next week and anything else. So right. we'll see you on the other side. Bye. Bye.
Chapter 5 Alexander That was better than anything I've ever read about, Liliana says after a few moments of quiet. I'm so glad you found me. I can hear the awe in her voice, and it makes me want to puff my chest with the knowledge that I put it there. I nuzzle her neck and then take a nip of her skin, and she giggles. The sound sinks into me, making me smile. I didn't know someone's laugh could do that to you. The thought of never having it scares the shit out of me. I hold her tighter. You belong to me now, little one. I own you. I think I keep saying it for her benefit as well as my own. She will always be mine, no matter what. And I want to make sure she understands that. Especially now, with my bare cock buried inside her and my cum leaking out of her pussy. I'm sure she's bred with how much I put into her. But I'll keep doing it just to make sure it takes root. To make sure I own every part of her. I need it. Why were you here all alone and waiting for me? I'm sure this is a question I should have asked before I took her. But there wasn't enough time between seeing her and the need for her hitting me like a fucking truck. I slide my hand between her legs and cup her pussy, not playing with her, just holding it possessively while she tells me her story. I was raised by my grandmother. She died a few months ago, and I've been here all alone since. We had a few people who lived here and helped take care of the place, but they left the other day, and I didn't know what I was going to do. She never took me anywhere to see how the outside world is. Everything I know, I learned from books, and even that isn't much. She sighs and nuzzles into me. I'm so glad you found me, Alexander. I was starting to get scared. I'd never met a man before, and when you walked in and I saw you standing there, I knew you'd come to rescue me. I lick the shell of her ear and kiss her just below it. If another man had seen you, I have no doubt he'd have tried to take what's now mine. Thrusting into her a little, I show her what I mean. Men are primal, princess. Any man seeing you so young and sweet would have known your pussy was untouched and would have been clawing to get at you. They want a ripe little cunt like yours to sink their cocks into. You're so beautiful and look so innocent. It's their darkest fantasy. Having a teenager bouncing on their dicks and filling her with cum. I feel her shiver, and I nibble on her shoulder. But I've had you first, and you'll be mine forever. No man will ever get near you. I don't want any other man. I hear the smile in her voice, and I can't wait any longer. I have to take her again. One more time, and then we can talk. Then I can take care of her. Pulling out, I hate the loss of her cunt, but I roll Liliana on her back and then hover over her. Kneeing her legs apart, I slide back into her tight pussy. She moans when I fill her again, and I can't help but feel like a god, her god. I will own her and rule over her body for the rest of her life. You're lucky I'm the one who found you, Liliana. No one will treat you better than I will. You'll have everything you've ever dreamed of and more. All you have to do is ask, and I'll make it appear. You'll be the one owning me, sweet girl. Her bright, doe eyes look up at me, and she grins. Her hands come up around my neck, and she raises her hips in invitation for me to go deeper. Leaning down, I press my lips to hers. Her sweet taste floods my senses, and I start to thrust. Her slender legs wrap around my waist, and I think about how long it's been since she's eaten. She's too thin and needs to gain weight. I'll take care of that, though. I'll take care of everything. Moving my mouth down her neck, I nibble and suck the soft skin as I go. When I get to her breasts and see her hardened nipples, I can't help but take them in my mouth. I suck as much of them as I can in my mouth and lick all around it. Her body bucks under me at the sensation, her fingers digging into my back. Just once more, little one. I need you once more. 
and then I can take care of you. I lick back up her body and rut into her pussy, edging closer to my climax. She's going to have marks all over her from my mouth and beard, but all it does is turn me on more. I don't want anyone thinking she isn't claimed, so I'll make sure she's covered. Breeding her will do that too. Mine, I growl into her neck, feeling her pussy clench at the word. Yes. Her voice is just a whisper as she climaxes on me, clinging to my big body above hers. She shouts my name, and I thrust as far as I can one last time and empty a load of hot cum into her. Feeling each pulse pour inside her makes me grit my teeth. She's unprotected and ripe, which means impregnating her will be so easy. When I catch my breath and balance myself on top of her so that my weight doesn't crush her little body, I look down and brush a dark, glossy strand out of her face. Her arms come up to my chest and she pets me, like she wants to make sure I'm real too. How about we get you cleaned up? I lean down and kiss the end of her nose, making her giggle. The sound is so innocent and sweet, it makes my cock twitch inside of her. I wonder what that giggle would sound like with my cock in her mouth. Chapter six. Alexander. Picking her up from the bed, I cradle her naked body in my arms. I'd gotten out of bed and found a bathroom down the hall with an old clawfoot tub. It would be big enough for the two of us, but just barely. I filled it with warm water and some bath oils I found nearby. When we reach the bathroom, I get in first and then help her step in. I have her sit down between my legs so that her back is to my chest. I grab a cloth and begin to rub it all over her body, cleaning her and sating the beast inside me that wants her again. I need to let her heal a bit before I take her again. She's probably sore, but her bath will help. How are you feeling, little one? I slide my hand between her legs, cupping her pussy. Perfect, she sighs, her head falling back onto my chest as a happy smile spreads across her face. How can something feel so right so fast? I guess it's like most things in my life. I always go for what I want. I trust my instincts. They have never steered me wrong. That's how I'm a billionaire at my age. Do you like it here? I push, wondering what will happen next. She's been so closed off from the world, and it makes me wonder if she just wants to stay here or go out and see the world. Either way, it will be with me beside her. It's funny how hours ago I was ready to rip this home apart. Now I'll do anything to keep it standing if it's what her little heart desires. If it keeps her giving me those sweet little smiles and giggles, I'll do it. It's okay. She shrugs lazily, her eyes fluttering open. I like it anywhere you are. She smiles, making two dimples show. Jesus, she couldn't look more innocent. She's like an angel laid out for the taking. I have no idea what I've ever done to deserve her, but I'm keeping her. Long gone are thoughts of what business meetings I need to get to or the next merger I need to plan. Fuck it, this is where I'm staying. All that other shit can go fuck itself. Everything I've done in my life has set me on the path to find this perfect little princess. Every dollar I've made, every hour I've spent working late into the night, it's all been for her. I'm only pissed I hadn't found her sooner. It eats at me to think she'd been so alone when I could have been with her, taking care of everything she could ever need. She turns in my arms and kisses my chest. My cock, which has been hard the entire time, bobs under the water. He wants inside that teenage pussy again, but I push down the need and just enjoy Liliana's lips on me. Her hands move lower to my hips, and I give her a hard look. Careful teasing, little one. 
I don't want to tease, she says, looking up at me so angelically. I want to kiss you there, like you did me. Her hands move to my cock, surrounding it, and I can't help but thrust up into the grip. The tip of my cock peeks out of the water, and I nod to her. Okay, put your mouth on the tip and lick it. Watch your teeth, princess. I take her dark curls in my hands and hold them up in a knot to keep them out of the way. Her small mouth opens wide to accommodate my size, and her little pink tongue flicks out just a little and licks me. A pearl of cum beads on the head of my cock, and she looks up at me excitedly, like it's magic. Go on, lick that up. Don't miss a drop. Her tongue flicks out again and licks me clean, but then I feel a pulse, and another droplet appears in its place. Guiding her mouth, I hold her over the tip while she takes it in her mouth. Now suck, little one. I'm going to give you more. She hollows her cheeks, and I close my eyes, groaning at the feeling. She's inexperienced, but something about that makes it so much better. Knowing she's never had a dick in her mouth makes me feel like I'm owning another part of her. The vein on the underside of my cock throbs, and I give her more cum. Not a big burst all at once, but little squirts in her mouth. She doesn't move or work my shaft. She just sits there, delicately holding the head of my cock in her mouth and sucking. It's still enough to get me off as I slowly cum in her mouth. Perfect, I whisper when I think she's had enough, and I pull her off. She smiles at me and there's a little of my cum on her bottom lip. I swipe it away with my thumb and then hold it out for her to suck off. She does so without asking, and it makes me so proud. Good girl. Reaching between her legs, I rub her pussy and feel her sticky wetness. It's not just from the tub. No, she's slick with need. Her hips start to move with my hand, and I move the heel of my palm to her clit for her to grind against. That was so perfect, Liliana. Now you get a reward. Giving her a little more pressure, I rub her hard nub to get her off. It only takes a few moments, which makes me think she liked eating my cum almost as much as I liked eating her cunt. She shudders and shakes as she climaxes, crying out, her pleasure echoing off the tiled walls. But I catch her and work her through her pleasure. She nearly collapses on top of me, laying her head on my chest. I smile at that as I rub the warm cloth up and down her back. She's worn herself out. Chapter 7 Liliana Alexander brings the cracker to my mouth and I take a bite. Using his thumb, he brushes a crumb off my lip while I chew. His tender gesture makes me smile. I keep thinking I'm going to wake up at any moment, that this can't be real. It's almost like I've fallen into one of my books. When he offers me the rest, I take it, biting the tip of his finger and making his eyes narrow. But then I catch a smile playing at his lips. Keep that up and I'll leave little bites all over you. His eyes go between my legs. I'm sitting cross-legged on the bed, still completely naked after just getting out of the bathtub. I follow his line of vision and see the little bite marks he put there after our bath. He'd pulled me from the tub and dried my hair and brushed it, then placed me on the edge of the bathroom sink, putting his mouth between my legs once again, and licked me until I begged him to stop until I couldn't take any more. Then he stroked himself to release, spending on my skin and rubbing it in again, saying he had to put back what we'd washed off. He'd said I was never allowed to be without some of him on me. I didn't know what to think of that, but my heart just fluttered at how possessive he was being. It made me believe he'd never leave me. I'd never be left alone again. I guess I mean more. He adds, his hand reaching out, touching the little marks on my thighs. 
Okay, maybe they weren't so little. You can put them anywhere you like, I tell him. I love them too. They make me feel cherished and wanted. You need rest, little one, and I think maybe I should give her a little rest too. I stick out my bottom lip, never wanting him to give me a rest. I'm tender, but I'll be fine. He just laughs, leaning in and kissing me. He pushes his tongue into my mouth in that demanding, possessive way of his. It feels like he's claiming me each time he does it. Soon I'm on my back, trying to wrap my legs around him, but he rolls so I'm on top. Releasing my mouth, he wraps his arms around me, and I lay my head on his chest. Rest, it's my job to take care of you. And I'm sure those pouts will work on me most of the time, but not when I know you need something more. Okay, is all I can say, because I love the idea of him taking care of me. No one really has. I never knew my parents, and for as long as I can remember, I've lived in this house. My grandma was never very loving. I always felt like a burden, like someone she was forced to care for and I just tried to stay out of her way as best I could. She barely left her room herself. She left the women she'd hired to handle everything, even teaching me. It's why I became so engrossed in books. They're all I've ever had, but not anymore. Now I have Alexander. He's my hero come to life. Promise me you'll never leave me, I say, sleepily wrapping myself around him. Never, he growls in a deadly tone. I feel it deep in his chest, and it makes me feel safe while I drift off to sleep. When I wake, the bed is empty, and panic hits me hard. Flying from the bed, I grab my nightgown off the floor, putting it on in haste. I take off at a dead run, throwing open the door to my room and heading down the hall as fast as my feet will carry me. I'm down the stairs and almost slip, but catch myself on the banister without slowing down. I can't, I have to find him. The thought makes a loud sob escape my throat. It can't have been a dream, it must have been real. I can still smell him on me, feel him in me. He wouldn't leave me, please, no. I throw back the front door and see him standing with the same two men from before. They're standing in front of a car, and one of the doors is open, ready for someone to enter. He's leaving me. He turns at the sound of the front door hitting the wall with a loud crash. His face is unreadable. I run towards him and fling myself at him, grabbing him as tight as I can. He catches me easily, and I bury my face in his neck. Leave now, I'll call you later, I hear Alexander say, and I start to cry. Tears slip free of my tightly closed lids. I feel us moving back, and I can't bring myself to open my eyes or loosen my hold. You promised, is all I can say between sobs. I feel him sit down with me still in his arms. His hands start to rub my back, and it only makes me cry harder. Calm down, little one, you're going to make yourself sick. You promised, I say again, this time sitting up to look at him. A slash of anger arcs through me now. Why does everyone leave? Why am I always left alone? Is there something wrong with me? Oh, sweetheart. I watch as his face crumples in pain. He cups my face. I did promise you, and I meant it. I'll never leave you. Ever. He brushes some of the tears away with his thumbs. Those tears are going to kill me. He leans up and starts kissing my cheeks all over. Never leave you, he says, before each kiss he places on my face until all my tears are gone. Then he places a soft kiss on my lips. Then what were you doing? I ask, looking up into his eyes, which have gone all soft and warm. I was telling them to go home, and that I'll be staying here. Forever? I push, wiggling closer to him in his lap. He drops his hands from my face, bringing them to my hips. Forever. Unless you want to go somewhere else, then we'll do that. Whatever you want, little one. Anything you want. 
His hands grip me tighter. I love you. I feel so much relief at his words, and I throw myself at him again, wrapping my arms around him. I love you too, I mumble into his neck. I've never said that to anyone, and I've never had someone say it to me before. But I think I'm going to have a lot of firsts with Alexander. This will never get old, he says, holding me tightly. When I finally push back, I jump off his lap and run over to the far wall of the living room. I go to the bookcase, grab a book, and bring it back over to where he's sitting, where I then crawl back into his lap. I open it. These are the places I've always wanted to go. Inside the books are tons of places I've always wanted to see all over the world. You're in luck, little one. I just so happen to have a plane. I'll take you anywhere you want. Really? Promise. He leans in a little bit, his mouth but a breath from mine. But wear that nightgown out of this house again, and I'll spank that little ass of yours, he growls, before taking my mouth in another possessive kiss. Epilogue. Alexander. About a year later. Oh God, Alexander, they're sore, be gentle. I kiss my way up from Liliana's pussy, squeezing her tits and watching the milk run down the sides. I've got the taste of her cunt on my face as I move up her body and latch on to one of her hard nipples. Her sweet milk hits my tongue, and I look over to see little drops of cream fall from her other fat tit. Every time she comes, she leaks, and I can't help but lick up the sugary mess. You're so fucking horny for it, you're soaked, I say, lapping up all that's run out. Please, I need you inside me. She bucks under me, and I glide my cock to her wet opening, filling her in one hard thrust. She moans loudly, and I put my hand over her mouth. Don't wake the baby yet, little one. I'm feeding right now. It's daddy's turn for attention. Rutting into her, I feel her pussy squeeze me and coat my dick. She loves when I get my turn on her breast milk. I think she likes knowing she's taking care of me, too. We're currently staying in one of our houses off the coast of Florida. Liliana never gets tired of the sunshine and the beach. We still have the home she grew up in, and we like to spend Christmas there every year. I had it completely redone and keep staff there year round so that the place is well taken care of and we can go back anytime she wants. I'm retired for the most part, only working when I feel like it. My job now includes taking care of my family. Liliana gave birth to our son Max a few months ago, and he's the light of our lives. It's been the most magical feeling in the world, being with her and making a family. It's not something I thought I would ever have, but now that I do, I can't imagine a moment without them in my life. Liliana moans under me, and I move my mouth to her other breast, licking up the spilled milk. She's so sensitive since having the baby. She comes with just a few quick touches. Her pussy clenches hard when I suck her nipple, and she comes all over me. I keep my hand on her mouth to keep her from shouting, still driving my thickness into her. That's it. Give me more. It's so sweet when you come. A few more drops leak out, and I greedily take them. I lean down and nuzzle my face against her tits, loving the feeling of how full they are. I need more, though. So I roll us over and pull her chest down to my mouth while she rides me. I alternate between nipples, letting the sweet cream rub on my mouth. Then I take a fistful of her hair and bring her lips to mine. I push my tongue into her mouth, letting her taste how much she wants me. The flavor of her pussy and milk makes my balls draw up, ready to fill her. She breaks the kiss and looks down at me. The doctor said I could get pregnant again really fast if you didn't pull out. I give her a wicked smile and slam her hips down on me, holding her still. I'll come in you as many times as I want. 
probably keep you bred for a while. You're still a teenager, little one. Your pussy is made for this. She smiles back at me and starts to grind against me, then arches her back and comes again. Her cunt grips me like a fist, and I watch as tiny drops of milk leak out of her tits and roll down. I thrust up, releasing my seed in her and bathing her unprotected pussy with cum. Just think, you could have another baby in you right now, I say, grinning at her. The words cause my cock to twitch inside her, and her pussy pulses around me. Now come here and finish taking care of me. She lets out a laugh and moves up my body, letting my cock slip free. Our combined cum drips from her pussy, but she moves so that her legs are together, and she holds as much as she can inside. She leans over me, her breast close to my mouth, and I latch on, suckling her again. She runs her hand through my hair and pets me while I play with her other nipple. Her other hand goes to my cream-covered cock and starts to jerk me off. The sticky passion on my dick slicks her hand as it glides up and down. I love having her milky tit in my mouth while she has her hand on my cock, getting me close to the edge of coming. When I'm ready to shoot off again, she'll ask me where I want to put it. Usually I grab her waist and put it in her pussy. But sometimes I want her to drink it. Something about having my cum not only in her cunt, but in her body turns me on. I'm feeling dirty tonight. So I might just say her ass. But why waste a perfectly good load? Grabbing her hips, I roll us back over and put my cock in her warm, wet cunt. She'll be pregnant by morning if I have my way. This has been Untouched by Alexa Riley. Read for you by Melania Stevens. Welcome back. Hey. So, you got your happily ever after. Yes. <laughs> like I said um, earlier in the week, I said you can go grab this book at alexarelli.com or edenbooks.org if you want to download this to your Kindle. So if you have an Amazon reading device and you want to read this book on it, you can grab it from alexarelli.com or edenbooks.org and download it to your Kindle. And you can also grab this at Barnes & Noble or um, Apple or Kobo. You can get it there too. Um, or you can just listen for free on here. There you go. But um, Summertime Sneak Out is our most recent release. It came out last Saturday. Uh, that's the third book in the Camp Hardwood series. And then the fourth and final book, um, you can pre-order it now so you don't forget and I know those pre-orders hit early, too. They hit sometimes at before midnight. Um, it, that's called Secret Baby at Camp. And that comes out January uh, 29th. So that's not tomorrow, but next Friday. So just so you guys have that in your brains. Um, so those are our next releases. And then um, look out for February. We're going to have a release, and it's called For Richer for Poor. And that's going to be the first book in a four book series, I think. Or maybe a, a three book series. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we may, may double up on that last one. Mm -hmm. But um, next week we have, um, oh my God, Tessa, Tessa Bailey. Bailey. <laughs> I'm like totally left my brain. Renaissance Man. That was the second book um, we ever had on the podcast. Originally it was in five parts. So we're going to condense it a little bit and re-record the opening so we will have um brand new stuff to talk about next week books we're reading what we're eating what we're watching all that good stuff so um we're going to bring that to you next week and then um we've got lots more ahead for season eight with brand new books and stuff like that coming but um we just really wanted to to feature tessa and one of her books and it is renaissance Nina is probably one of my favorite books she's ever written i love it so much and i can't wait to hear it so again but um, I guess we'll see you guys on Tuesday. Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read, 